My name is Daniel. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator at Nectar. The bulk of my work is doing creative material for brands that are selling on Amazon. Now I'm starting to branch out with uh, materials in Shopify, either on their social media, other places that they might need graphic design. Um, I do have a background in illustration and design. Um, my primary focus is e-commerce. And the thing that I try to do is just to have fun with all the brands. They all look different. They all have different focuses. They all have solid things to offer. And we just try to bring out what's, what's cool and exciting about them. There's challenges in both. If, if it's something that everyone buys, clearly there's appeal there because everyone's buying it. Um, the issue with things that everyone buys is that probably lots of companies are making the same product. So the challenge there is establishing how is this specific product that maybe does the same basic, has the same basic functionality as the others in, in its class, why is this one specifically better than all the other ones? Whereas for a niche product, it's still challenging because it's a niche product for a reason, right? It's not a, it doesn't have mass market appeal. So you really have to think about the target demographic really closely. Why are only certain people buying this product? And most importantly, establishing why it might not be interesting for other people, why it's unique for a very particular set of interests or skills or things that people are trying to achieve. One of the main challenges in designing for Amazon is you're, you're inside of Amazon's package, right? You're on the Amazon website. So you're not escaping that. You're not escaping Amazon's rules. You're not escaping Amazon's UI that's around everything. And so you have to be really conscious about establishing the brand. In Shopify, you have full control, right? The user only sees things that you intended to put there. When it comes to Amazon, you're kind of stuck having to still see the Amazon UI and the sizes that Amazon puts on your, your designs. A plus has to be a certain size. You can't go beyond seven modules. Infographics, always in that little corner. Copy, always goes on the right. Infographics, always goes on the left. On mobile, it stacks. And so you're, you're in that predetermined rule set. And so you have to be really conscious about establishing the brand because it has to pop out of that UI. Mm -hmm. Whereas on Shopify, you can kind of relax a little bit because you're in full control. It's still challenging because full control is still means that you have a lot more to do. You got to keep in mind that even though you design all the infographics, you design all the A+, Again, Amazon might throw all of your competitors right under it. And if they also happen to look good, then it's really easy for the user to just click out of everything that you worked out, worked so long for. But on Shopify, <laughs> you're, the user is in a way stuck in your experience. So you get full control of that. But I will say that on the front end, we have great results. I have the numbers to show that Nectar content on Amazon delivers in terms of increasing click-through rates, whether it's videos or our brand store design, A-plus content, generally listing images, main images, infographics. Hey, our photography, you get 20% more per product that has new product photography from Nectar uh, conversion rate. 15 to 20% per page redesigned by Nectar conversion rate increase. And that's a lot. If you have optimized A plus content period, that looks good. Amazon says that you're gonna get a 5% increase in sales without even paying any more into ad sales. So it all if you have all of those things optimized and stacked up and they look good, all of those things together, just can lead to such a massive boon to a brand compared to what they had before. So infographics are 
Very, very important. It is, I believe, part of the first impression for a brand and a product. So clearly, I mean, all the critical information has to be there, right? You know, product dimensions, you know, all the features, what are the colors that are available for this product? And you can get away with just having that information. But if you want customers to come back to you specifically, instead of just searching on Amazon again for another product, then you have to package it in an attractive and cohesive look so that if someone happens to come across your products again, it's like, oh yeah, I bought, you know, I bought a product from this company six months ago and I had a really good experience. They recognize that. And if you have that, uh, that great first impression right off the bat, and maybe they come back for a second product, if you build the brand in the infographics and go beyond just displaying the critical information, you start building that recognition that's so hard to build on Amazon because they have so much control over how things are displayed. So it, it really is important to nail the look of an mm -hmm. infographic besides having all the critical information because that's how your brand stands out on Amazon. One of the big mistakes is not nailing the basics. That is not having all the critical information, right? If it's a product where it really matters to know what the dimensions are, if you're missing the dimensions and you're having the customer have to like look all over the page for it, that's not a good experience. It's a very easy thing to put in an infographic. And if you miss that, you miss a big point about why people are shopping and looking at that page in the first place. The second thing, you do have to go a little beyond that and establish the brand because you can have all the critical information, but if it looks the same as every other product that shoppers are maybe comparing it with, I know that if I'm buying something on Amazon, it doesn't matter what it is. I have five, six, eight windows open of what essentially is the same product. And I usually go for the one that looks like the brand went a little beyond the basics to establish, you know, good photography, good design, making sure that the presentation is really good. I usually go for that brand instead of the others. And so I think not focusing on design is a, is a big missed opportunity. I wouldn't call it a mistake per se, because there's plenty of bad infographics out there. And I'm sure they have some sales, but they could have way more with good design. I think design mistakes are still filled with good intentions, right? Nobody doesn't want to sell. So I, so it goes the other way too, where it's like, well, let's put all the copy in there. Let's put all of the information about everything ever in there. And it's like, you can't do that either. And especially with infographics themselves, uh, because it's limited real estate. So I think the problem is like a bedrock issue of, do you really actually know what the critical information for your product is? If you don't, that that needs to be talked about. And then once you establish that, then you're doing a real estate equation. Good design. Does my brand pop out? Does the product pop itself? Am I able to show this in an attractive way? If you show something in an attractive way, it gets over the emotional hurdle of can I picture this particular thing in my life? If you just design for desktop, which people have, you know, ever since computers started and the internet started, because that's that's where it all began, right? And so I think the standard is to design for desktop first and then just you know try to you know move things around, make it a little smaller to fit on mobile. But mistakes can happen where the text suddenly is too small. Or on desktop, you know, you have a lot of horizontal real estate and so you can put you know three four columns of information on mobile you don't have that real estate so now suddenly you have to stack everything and the user is scrolling endlessly to see all the information because they can't possibly fit it all on the same screen and so recently there's been a, a bit of a movement to design what's called mobile first design which i try to think of as i'm designing for basically everything these days where I'm trying to imagine how, you know, I'm designing on a desktop screen, but how would this look if it was four times smaller? 
right? So things like contrast become really important, making sure that your text is legible on, on a photo. A lot of people just put text on photo and call it a day, but if it's smaller on a mobile phone, maybe you have contrast issues, and now suddenly the copy that a copywriter spent an hour thinking about is illegible. <laughs> um, so contrast is really important. Text size is really important. And if you're doing something like A+, plus or, or even a Shopify web design, you have to think about fitting as much, getting as much bang for your buck on the same screen on mobile. For desktop, you can show a lot of information. You can blow things out. Things are almost for granted really easy to see, really easy to read. And then when you try to scale down for mobile, suddenly you realize like, oh crap, this, like all this information that I was able to fit in one screen suddenly doesn't and people might lose context on mobile. So if you start on mobile and make sure it looks really, really good there, I think you're setting yourself up to a really great experience on desktop instead of designing a good experience for desktop and having to struggle to like squish it down into mobile. Um, so yeah, you have to start thinking about mobile as a priority these days. We are just end to end more of a consumer first convenience culture in other words people want what they want when they want it in an easily consumable format anything that is an obstacle to that and you have automatically put a divot in your conversion rate you have automatically pushed them in the direction of somebody who doesn't have the same hurdle for them to get over and i'm talking about i have to scroll a little bit further to get all the information I have to scroll too far to find out the pricing, the size of something. Um, I have to shoot, even if it's your website and it's uh, it's not optimized properly and the load time is one second too slow because you put too high of a resolution of a photo. And that's, that's like you want it to be high res, but it has to also be size friendly to bandwidth. There's statistics out there that say 6% loss in conversions for just a one second delay. And then it goes up exponentially after that. And I've, I've felt that like where I've gone to a website and gone, why isn't this loading? Never mind. I'm no longer, I'm not going to be your customer. Can't, can't it's almost like you snap out of it. it. <laughs> where like yeah. maybe you're, you're impulse shopping. And then if the website takes too long to load, it like almost gives you enough time to think like, Actually, maybe I don't need this. <laughs> and then you close out of the website. I actually enjoy constraints. Sometimes I actually struggle when, when it's a full blank slate, no rules. It's almost a struggle to carve your own path and figure out what's right and what's wrong. But having constraints like the ones that Amazon sets on you, it, it actually makes my job a little bit easier because I know what the rules are. I know what I can and cannot do. I know, you know, Amazon has their desktop web page, but I also know that they have an app. Got to make sure it looks good on both. So I know, I know what I'm playing with. So having creative freedom within that is actually not that big of a problem. Um, it's, it's a little, it's a little more empowering actually compared to a blank slate. However, what does make our job a little bit difficult is when the rules change. For example, premium A plus came out and suddenly we have to rethink how A plus is done. And premium A plus is still evolving. I mean, the UI changed not that long ago. And so something like a carousel slider, suddenly the little buttons on the top changed. And if you were thinking of more of a flowing design where each image and each block flows into each other, now there's a thin strip that Amazon put there that kind of breaks things up a bit. And so that can throw us off a little bit. So we have to go get a little bit ahead of what things, how things can change. And so that's really where the struggle is, is not, not the rules themselves, it's when the rules change. Well, at least you could say that we are full-time devoted to that. I can't imagine what it would be like being a brand who's just trying to do it 
in-house while also just trying to handle the business aspects of the rest of what's going on. It's resource intensive. It requires proactive thinking ahead of time. We see a lot of brands who are coming to us asking for help because they just got behind the able, they, they, they fell behind and now they're being reactive to the changes and going, what do I do? But we're, we're constantly considering these things because it's our job to, and that's incredibly valuable. brands might be reactive to these changes and that's the positive thing about hiring someone who's doing this full time our job is to be proactive about these things and see the changes as they happen and adapt as they happen instead of being reactive and thinking oh man we something happened something changed the rules changed and uh, like we don't have the expertise for it it's okay we'll just figure it out down the line when it really becomes a problem like if premium a plus becomes the standard any brand that hasn't been really trying to pursue it well if amazon deprecates standard a plus well now they're caught behind and maybe mm -hmm. they're at the risk of losing their a plus content so it, it's important to get ahead and be proactive about these changes you can see it like day after day like through our slack channels there are people actively posting about upcoming policy changes and changes to the amazon ui and asking the question, who does this affect? Like, and us doing the active work of going, these people need to be checked on, et cetera, et cetera. We need to update this, this, and this. And that's incredibly valuable to our customers. I think that that gets lost in a larger agency or agencies package things up in very, like you get this, this is, this is what your deal is and you get, X number of this, but it's templatized to a certain degree. You get this package, you get this package, you get this package. And as a result, and as a result of not levying enough resources to each partner, they end up being reactive too, because they're just not checking in on it frequently enough. It's one thing that Nectar does really well. It's the standard designer's toolkit, which these days Adobe has a very strong stronghold of uh, all of the designer tools. Illustrator and Photoshop are bread and butter for, for creating any sort of design. Illustrator is actually where all the layouting and all the final assets really get made. Photoshop is still really helpful these days because the core of design is pairing typography with images. Every now and again, it, the images need a little bit of a lift to to really fit in as a in a design, and so Photoshop is still very very heavily used. Every now and then, though, I do employ the use of something like After Effects and Premiere because more and more video has become an important aspect of not just Amazon but everywhere, social media, Shopify, e-commerce in general. Video is just everywhere, so knowing a little bit of motion graphics and doing a little bit of that in After Effects has been more valuable as time went on. And just things like background videos on an Amazon store or even just videos in general in Premium A+, you can have it next to your infographics. Sometimes you need to pare those down, edit them, change the aspect ratio. And so Premiere has also been an invaluable tool. So those, those really are the, the big, big four. Daniel, this has been really great. Nectar has a great creative team that delivers results. We talked about all the conversion rate, click-through rate increases, and how important looking good and showing your brand on Amazon is for increasing sales and maintaining profitability. Oftentimes, these things are overlooked. They, people think they're superfluous, but content is king especially when it comes down to i'm scrolling on my phone and i've got a few seconds to make an impact you have to show the right information it has to be an easy user experience and you have to get over a lot of mental hurdles for people to click and buy your product our team does a great job of doing that of course i'm biased and i really appreciate the time that you've spent here 
with us today. You're very busy. You have, you have a lot of brands to do work for on your plate. So I'm gonna let you get back to that. But thanks again for sitting and talking with me with me about this. It's been a lot of really great information that hopefully people get use out of whether or not they sign up with us. But if you want to learn more about what we do, visit thinknectar.com and slap that contact button. Give me your information. We will reach out and we will talk. And if we can't help you, we will refer you to somebody that can. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, for all the insightful questions.